Welcome to today's lecture on Researcher's Career Path. My name is Meda Andriauskina and I'm delighted to guide you through this journey of discovery and inspiration. Research is the driving force behind progress, shaping the world we live in. Today, we will explore its importance across diverse fields, starting from science and technology, continuing with social sciences. We will also discuss the path to becoming a researcher and the strategies how to write a successful research paper and getting published. We will then go through the essential competences like curiosity and critical thinking and discuss career opportunities in academia, industry and beyond. Finally, I'll give you some sincere advice on how to manage it all. First, I'd like to introduce myself. To be honest, I have a quite few roles in my work life. I'm an associate professor at one of the Lithuania's higher education institutions. I'm also a project manager at our family construction business. And I am a co-owner of a very sweet Australian Shepherd kennel. My educational journey began with a bachelor degree in economics. And initially, I dreamed of becoming a transport logistics manager. However, during my internship in the logistics company, I just realized that this path was absolutely not for me. Then I started working in a non-governmental organization, seeking to help vulnerable women to reintegrate into the labor market because I wanted to bring something more to the society. At the same time, I thought to myself, well, I need some more competences in project management. Therefore, I continued my master's studies and got a double master's degree in project management by studying both in Lithuania and Germany. Frankly speaking, I have never ever dreamed about becoming a researcher. However, during my studies, when I was preparing various research papers, I was recognized by few professors who offered me an opportunity to continue, to continue my research in PhD or in other words, doctoral studies. At this moment, I am a part of a sustainable economics research group and my fields of interest include topics such as innovation development, energy economics and energy saving behavior. I believe that one of the best aspects of being a researcher is the freedom. The freedom to analyze and give impact in different topics that are really important and relevant to the society. So, what is research and why is it so important? The world, as you may observe, is constantly changing. Wars, ongoing conflicts, pandemias, they threaten stability. Climate change poses threat to our human well-being and also to our planet. Well, human technology interaction also strongly influences the world we live in and hence needs to be explored and regulated. For the vast majority of these challenges, we need research. A widely accepted definition of research is the creation of new knowledge and or the use of existing knowledge in a new and creative way to generate new concepts, methodologies and understandings. The importance of it is undoubtful. First of all, Research drives knowledge and innovation, helping to understand and solve problems. Well, let's take GPS for example. Research in physics, engineering and satellite technology enabled the development of GPS that provides accurate positioning information worldwide. This innovation revolutionized navigation. Research also promotes critical thinking and empowers communities. For instance, researchers analyze the connections between individuals, groups and organizations within social networks, as for instance, Twitter or Facebook. Imagine, they analyze how information spreads and opinions are formed, and they can identify patterns that show and may indicate misinformation, manipulation or other concerning activities during, for example, presidential elections. If any suspicious or harmful behavior is observed, well, the authorities, such as election commissions, are informed 
and our rights are protected. We can continue with the advances in solar technology that enhance resilience and decentralizes energy generation. Policymakers then can implement incentives, for example, subsidies, uh, to encourage people to adopt solar energy technologies. As I'm also in the research field of energy saving behavior, I can tell you a bit about one of the projects I was involved in. During the project Encompass, together with partners from Greece, Italy, Germany and Switzerland, we analyzed the behavior patterns of energy users. After a deep theoretical analysis, we created a mobile application that evaluates the energy consumption in the building and offers recommendations on how to save energy. More than 2,000 people participated in these experiments and the average energy savings was about 4%. During the project, a hybrid energy consumption awareness game called Funergy was also created. More than 1,500 students participated in these game sessions, helping to spread awareness of responsible energy usage. At this point, I really hope that you have already grasped that interesting life of a researcher and you are curious on how to become one. It all starts with a spark, a moment of wonder that sets us on the path of exploration. Whether it's love for solving puzzles or analyzing human behaviors, our curiosity leads us to seek out knowledge and understanding. From primary school to higher education, we soak up information like sponges. We explore various subjects from mathematics and science to history and literature, laying the groundwork for future. But education is much more than just memorizing facts. As researchers, we need to ask provocative questions, analyze data, and think critically about the world around us. We can start engage in hands-on experiments, collaborate with our colleagues, and push the boundaries of our understanding. Well, you need to start somewhere. I myself started with student scientific conferences first, when I was bachelor student in my own higher education institution, later in Lithuania and afterwards internationally. It's a huge pleasure to meet the most intelligent people in your field spread your ideas and get feedback. A life of a researcher is rewarding, also because of the fact that you have a great chance to travel. I've traveled to the Baltics, then brought it to the Europe, and to be honest, a few months back, I returned from the World Economic Congress in Colombia. So, what takes to develop a research paper? Because developing research papers well, it's quite important in our everyday researcher's life. First, let's discuss the research progress. You start with a research topic or problem identification. What is interesting for you? What is interesting and relevant for the society? Are there any gaps in the current solutions of a certain challenges? Then what you do is you review the existing literature because you have to be sure whether the solution to a certain challenge hasn't been invented before. Afterwards, you continue with formulating your research question. Well, after that, you start designing your research methodology. And what does that mean? That means uh, it answers to the question, how will you perform your analysis? There might be quantitative as regression analysis, for example, or qualitative as interviews, or sometimes even mixed methods applied. Then you start collecting data by applying the selected methodology and techniques. Do not forget to follow the ethical standards and always seek for data quality and reliability. When you have your data collected, you start interpreting the results, analyzing and answering your research questions then drawing conclusions, and finally communicating your findings via research papers, presentations, or various other forms of dissemination. So what is the structure of a paper? Well, the most common structure of any research paper is introduction, 
which introduces the research topic, uh, the research question, and outlines the significance and objectives of your study. In the literature review, what you do, uh, you analyze the existing research relevant to the research question to provide context, identifying gaps, and justifying your paper. The methodology part uh, describes the design of the study including research approach, data collection methods, and analytical procedures to allow replication and understand the limitations. Because whether it's the most perfect uh, research, it still may have certain limitations that other authors and other society members should be informed of. In the results section, you provide the findings of the research usually in the form of tables, uh, various visualizations, statistics, etc. The discussion section interprets the results, discuss how they fit in the broader field, and uh, well, it uh, compares them to the other research results. Finally, you close the paper with the final section that summarizes the main findings, draws conclusions based on your discussion and your results, and of course, suggest areas for future research, future improvements or practical applications. Do not forget to write in a clear, concise and academic style. Let's continue with the publication strategy. First, you will need to choose the right journal. Identify reputable journals in your field that publish research similar to yours. What would I do? For instance, uh, you might want to use the Web of Science platform and it has a certain uh, function which is called Match Manuscript that helps align your research with the journal that might fit in. Let's see an example. Uh, I have a manuscript that is called Different Paths to a High Level Innovation Performance in the EU CE 11 countries. I also have an abstract of this research. I just upload it and click uh, the function Find Journals. Across 26 results of your match, you see that different keywords were identified as effective innovation policies, a higher level innovation performance, causal macro level recipes and other important keywords in your research. Well, this platform found you uh, 26 results that match your research. And one of those 26 results is technological forecasting and social change. This is really a highly reputable journal in the field of innovation. By the way, I just want to emphasize that other platforms such as Scopus also have similar functions. So do not believe that there is only one way how to do it. I'm just showing an example how, how you can do it. So I go to this journal's homepage and what do I usually do? I check their impact factor because it's really important. I check the audience, the scope, uh, the submission guidelines and of course the price of publication if there is any. And they always also read a few articles already published in the journal just to be sure whether my article fits in the scope of the journal. Here I see that the submission to acceptance period of time is 226 days. I have to decide whether I can wait for so long, to be honest. Also, if abstracting and indexing really fit my needs. If not, I can go back to the previous 26 journal list and check another journal. Uh, do not forget to avoid predatory journals and always consult with either your supervisor or de department of research just to be sure. Of course, in the beginning of your research path, it might be challenging, but do not worry. In the end of the day, you will really know how to check and how to pick the right journal for your research. Coming back to the publication strategy, uh, well, when you have uh, your right journal chosen, uh, you need to prepare the manuscript according to the journal guidelines, requirements of structure, length, referencing style, and formatting. For example, a journal might require that the article cannot exceed the limit of 8,000 words. And if, for example, you have, I don't know, 10 or 12,000 uh, words, you need to diminish uh, to fit in the journal requirements. 
Then uh, what you usually do, you write a cover letter uh, to prove the editors that your research really fits the scope of the journal, that your research is significant and it needs to be published. After that, you submit the manuscript and you are waiting. You are waiting for the peer review process, which starts immediately. And of course, for every researcher is, you know, almost a heart attack when you see that the email uh, is there and you see that, you know, review result is there. You click open and then you usually see um, four options. First option that everyone is seeking for is accept. That means that, you know, uh, there might be several grammatical mistakes and that's just it. The journal accepted your publication and your publication is published. There also can be three other options. So it's minor revision, major revision or reject. I don't want to talk about a lot about the last one because it's really heartbreaking, but sometimes it happens. And sometimes it happens not only because of your research, but it might happen because of the fact that your research simply does not fit in the journal scope and maybe you made uh, a few mistakes while picking the right journal. So coming back to these other two options with minor or major revision, that means that you need either minor or major revisions. You resubmit your article, the review, is again, uh, the review process again takes place and then you are waiting for another result. And afterwards you of course can get accept and that's what I really uh, wish for. Uh, but it also might happen that these iterations of um, researchers' uh, peer review processes repeat once, twice or even triple times and you need to improve your paper quite a lot. However, I really wish for you to understand that this is only for the good. Uh, because it helps to improve your paper to a certain level that uh, the most reputable journals would accept and publish your paper. So, uh, in the end, what we hope for is publication, of course. What are the necessary skills and competences of a successful researcher? If you'd ask me, it would be curiosity and creativity, critical thinking and problem solving, resilience, and finally, collaboration and communication. Why resilience, you might ask? Well, because it's not easy to first ensure good work-life balance when you are strongly involved into your investigations, experiments, and such things as that. And also because applying for funding and grants to cover your research expenses can sometimes be really time and nerve-consuming activity. Then why collaboration and communication is important? Firstly, because the necessity of interdisciplinary research. I myself, as an economist, I like to co cooperate and communicate a lot with uh, researchers from IT and mathematics uh, department to broaden my horizons, to apply methods that I usually would not apply, etc. Also, collaboration provides a rich blend of knowledge, methods, and, uh, well, it is very crucial for networking. And it can open up more opportunities for future projects if we communicate with other researchers. Also, funding and dissemination of our work, as well as professional recognition. You should remember that the path to becoming a researcher is not always like a straightforward path. It's filled with twists and turns, setbacks and also victories. It requires dedication, but it's also very, very rewarding. So one of the awards is a bunch of opportunities for your career. And I could say that it's almost unlimited. Why? Well, first, you of course can work in academia. You can conduct research, teach classes, publish articles, advise the policy makers and businesses and travel the world while networking and disseminating the results in scientific conferences. There is also an opportunity to work in industry. For example, in the automotive industry, a researcher might be a part of a team working as a 
major car manufacturer and focusing on the development of autonomous driving technologies to improve safety for future vehicles. Continuing with government and non-governmental organization, well, uh, as scientists at uh, NASA uh, might investigate climate patterns using satellite data, while someone at the World Health Organization might research public health policies, strategies to combat uh, infectious diseases. And finally, an entrepreneurial research might launch a biotech startup focusing on developing personalized medicine tools using AI to analyze patients' um, data for better diagnosis and treatment. So to summarize it all, there is really a number of different opportunities if you choose a path of a researcher. So let me summarize this lecture by revealing a little secret. As a child, I dreamed of being a journalist, then a psychologist, and even the host of events. From today's perspective, I can say that I do all these jobs, only in other forms. Uh, as a journalist, I conduct interviews with uh, different my research. I have everyday experience of a psychologist working with students. And also I become a presenter by speaking in front of an audience like I do today. So you don't need to limit yourself. What you dreamed about can come true in other much unexpected forms and maybe even better. So I wish you best of luck in pursuing the inspiring career of a researcher who have best opportunities to continue learning, growth and making impact to our society. Goodbye.